Motor Week is made possible by Lucas Oil and TireRack.com. In the meantime, let's look at a car that already has some of these aerodynamic features. Forget advertising claims, there have never been many true sports cars on the market at any one time. Finding that special combination of style, power, handling, and seating for just two at an affordable price has always been a slippery proposition. So when Mazda introduced the first RX-7 sports car in the spring of 1978 and asked only $7,000 per copy, enough closet sports car buffs emerged to buy over 100,000 of them the first year. But this is 1982. Is the RX-7 still the right answer to today's sports car equation? Let's look for the solution. Not much has changed with the RX-7 over the last four years. Some minor cosmetic surgery to be sure, but the most unique things about the car, its twin Wankel rotary engine, and its reasonable price are still intact. Like everything else, the RX-7 hasn't been immune to inflation. Base price is now 9,700 for the standard model. And our mid-range GS test car had a sticker of almost $14,000. But if you're familiar with the RX-7s, you know that this particular example has a couple of special body extras that clutter up the exterior. Up front, a flexible competition type air dam complete with Bosch driving lights. It not only keeps the car road bound at very high speeds, but enhances cooling at all speeds. In the rear is an exaggerated spoiler and vision restricting rear window louvers. They can also be optioned. That is if you feel the need to dress up your RX-7 in fancy clothes. Frankly, we prefer the plain version. But under that skin is where it begins to get to you. With no air conditioning on this car, engine accessibility was first rate. The RX-7 is the only mass-produced rotary engine car being imported to the U.S. today. Imagine two steel triangles rotating inside a circular-shaped housing. That's the gist of how this compact power plant works. There are actually only two combustion chambers, each with two spark plugs producing 100 horsepower and 105 pounds of torque. And that power, coupled with only 2,400 pounds, makes for a very quick passing acceleration time of only 4.2 seconds. Enough to dub this little beast Motor Week's Red Ball Express. The RX-7 paced our 500-foot stoplight drag course in 8.6 seconds at 56 miles per hour. That's a very fast time. In the standing quarter mile, initial acceleration was very good. Few cars of our acquaintance can approach the RX-7's performance duo of a quite fast time of 17.1 seconds and a speed of 80 miles per hour. The standard five-speed manual has precise linkage and performs smoothly even when cold. With those figures, they ought to use RX-7's more in movie chase scenes. Such willing power plus a very tight 32-foot turning diameter makes it just right for stunt driving U-turns. And to fill in another part of the sports car equation, it's no slouch in the rest of the handling department either. The RX-7 is very precise in corners, despite the use of cost-saving ball-type steering that's only reasonably quick and a solid live rear axle rather than independent suspension. The front always goes where it's pushed with controllable oversteer, as the light back end always telegraphs any intentions to come unglued with plenty of time for driver correction. And if that featherweight back end were going to cause you problems, it would do it in this high-speed emergency lane changing course. It didn't. This is a very entertaining road-hugging machine. Brakes were also up to sports car standards, though we've tested better ones in ordinary sedans. Stops from 30 miles per hour average 42 feet with little discernible fade, a good number but they were easy to lock. Panic stops from 55 miles per hour produced similar results. On average, it took 140 feet to stop the RX-7. We encountered consistent locking of all four wheels, and the standard Bridgestone rubber grabbed enough pavement to almost flat spot the tires. Most of our crew did complain of a mushy brake pedal as the four-wheel power disc system grew hotter. However, and again, fade was minimal, and there was no tendency of the rear end to swing wide. But what goes on inside the RX-7? Well, open up that rear hatch and you'll find generous space for all of our normal set of luggage once you flex your muscles, lifting them over the very high sill. For the driver, a basic, well-laid-out dash includes all the gauges you'd expect to find in a sports car, plus most of the creature features so normal to a Japanese import. 
The driving position is also very good. The RX-7 is just big enough to let you feel like you're wearing the car without being too cramped. The shift lever is perfectly situated and the seats are comfortable with good support, though they could do with a little more padding. If you're a fiend for the open air, RX-7s can be ordered with a solid, removable sunroof that detaches and stores in under 30 seconds. And in a few seconds more, that solid panel can be replaced with an all-glass moonroof. On the other hand, if you're just too practical to buy any car without some attention to fuel economy, you'll be glad to know that the manual RX-7 is rated by the EPA at 21 city and 30 highway. By the way, an automatic transmission is also available. However, since rotary engine cars aren't noted for fuel economy, we weren't surprised at our combined test average of only 20. To finish the equation, the Mazda RX-7 still manages to fit snugly into the traditional sports car club without high initiation fees. It has strong power, very commendable handling, and minus the trick bodywork, good style. It's also practical enough to carry plenty of luggage and at least on paper deliver reasonable gas mileage. In truth, we like the RX-7 very much and hope that Mazda will continue to improve their fine middle-class sports car.